Hi folks, this video is to introduce and discuss the version 1.2 update to the Hero Energy Rating Platform. This video will discuss the majority of changes, however we have broken the new summary view feature out into its own separate tutorial video given it forms a new dedicated view. We'll be covering the changes to the template view including the ability to save and load user templates, changes to the window library including the new WERS window database, new snap options in the visual view, new window and wall splitting actions, a range of new export features, alerts, simulation updates, and several new and important updates to the Hero web portal. The biggest change to the user interface for version 1.2 is the introduction of the summary view. You'll see that as a new docked view alongside the visual data grid and library main views. The summary view provides an important and powerful overview and high level editing interface for projects which we'll explain in more detail in the dedicated summary view tutorial. The template view which was introduced in version 1.1 has had a range of updates in version 1.2. The first change is that as well as being shown on new projects you can now access and reuse the template view continually throughout your project via the visual views top toolbar template button or via the control T keyboard shortcut. With this you can continue to change and update the current template, hit OK to apply them to your project's next created objects. Note it won't affect existing objects and only subsequently created objects. You can continue to work on your project within the, with the template view opened and visible and this is partly to allow you to continue to reuse and adjust the template throughout the project but also to allow you to select any assemblies or window specifications within the library view to add these as options to the respective controls within the template view such as wall assembly or window specification lists. Remember however that while you can have the template view open and continue working on your project it is only when the OK button, escape key or top right close button on the template view is pressed that the template is applied to the current project. The next big change to templates is the ability to save and load user created custom templates in the top area of the template view. This means that you can now create templates say for various construction typologies such as a brick veneer home on slab or a suspended weatherboard construction or an apartment building or even set up a template to hold the particular typical specifications for one of your clients such as their typical installations or window manufacturers etc. The current template in use for the project is shown in the top combo box and this starts out with the default hero template in use. You can then start to adjust your template as per usual and when you have fin finished and finalized the template you can save that to a .template file into the hero user directory or elsewhere for future use. These files can be shared then within your organization or beyond so that your team can be working using a consistent approach. Note, Hero detects on startup only those template files within the Hero user directory template subfolder. This is to provide a way to manage large amounts of template files by allowing you to have some typical or commonly used templates in that user template folder and then you can store the larger amount of templates if you wish in other locations just to avoid having that template list overwhelmingly large. So if you have a template file saved and stored elsewhere you can always use the open button to locate that template file and import it or load it into the template list for selection and use. Custom templates can be further changed or edited noting that any further changes won't be applied to that saved template file unless the user clicks the save button again to update and overwrite that file. This has allowed you to slightly change saved template files with project specific changes without overriding the underlying data in that template file. You can create a copy of an existing template file using the copy or clone button which will allow you to save the current template into a new file and then you can further adjust it from there. You can also rename templates using the rename button. Likewise you can delete a template file using the delete button noting that this is a permanent action and the underlying template file itself will be deleted too. 
Pressing delete on the hero default template, however, functions slightly differently by just resetting the default template back to its original configuration. As a reminder, you can always navigate quickly to that user folder via the file menu, open user folder in Explorer, or the Control shift e keyboard shortcut. The other main change to the template view in version 1.2 is the introduction of a new way of handling window styles and specifications. Many of the words window library specifications are for particular frame types or what hero terms opening styles, such as sliding or casement or awning. In addition to the previous template option of having a single template window style and window specification value, you can now enable your template to specify window styles with an associated window specification using the set window specification per window style checkbox. This will allow you to choose a window style and then select its related window specification and you can add multiple window styles and specification pairs for your project as needed. Remember the options available within that list of window specifications is related to the window library's selected window list. So if you had a project with say a awning, sliding, casement and fixed window types, you could assign a window specification that will be applied to these windows when their window styles are changed within the data grid. You can add an additional row for each style, select the specification for that style. Now, when we create our windows throughout the project, we'll create them in the visual view as usual and when we update the opening style in the data grid for these windows, you'll see the specification automatically changes to that entered in the template. The last item changed in the template view is the addition of the new insulated downlight option which we'll talk about shortly, which has been added to the template view too. There have been several changes within the visual view for version 1.2. The first is the introduction of some snap options to relevant drawing modes such as the zone or hole or screen drawing modes etc. These options allow users to change the various snapping behaviours within a project for new objects and they include XY axis snapping or orthogonal snapping which is now by default selected. This option inverts the previous shift key functionality for drawing straight lines in Hero and locks the drawing mode to create shapes in that straight x or y direction given that that's the majority of projects orientated this way. You can always hold shift to invert that functionality and so if x y axis snap option is on then holding the shift key during a line drawing sub mode will allow you to break from that x y axis snap for any angled lines and likewise if the x y axis snap option snap option is off, you'll get the previous behavior where the shift key snaps to XY directions. You can also now enable or disable the previously existing snapping options of snapping to existing points, which is the alignment lines that are shown whenever the mouse is near an existing object such as a nearby zone at a similar X or Y coordinate. And likewise you can toggle on and off snapping to adjacent level points too. These new snap options are applied to the drawing modes depending on their submodes where applicable. So you'll notice rectangular drawing modes already by definition are snapped to XY. So that option is not visible and options like downlight drawing modes have no relevant snap options there. Another change to the visual view is that screens and eaves are now contained on the same layer within the visual view given that they are used so similarly and can exist at the same location as each other. So when you now send to back a eave, it will send the eave under any screens and vice versa. So you can click the topmost eave or screen as required and interact with it. There are several new navigational aids in the visual view. The first being that the arrow keys will now pan the project up, down, left, right accordingly. And you can also use the keyboard shortcuts Control plus or Control minus to zoom in or out the visual view as required. There are a range of new export options available throughout Hero in version 1.2. For the visual view, you can now take a quick snapshot of the current level's visual view for your own further use, perhaps in client reports, etc. by clicking the cog icon in the top right of the visual view's top toolbar. This will copy the image to the Windows clipboard, ready to be pasted into any other applications.
Moving on to the data grid, you'll see several changes in version 1.2. Again, similar to the visual view, we have introduced several new export features. Uh, these are really quite powerful given the information contained in the data grid is quite uh, comprehensive. So you can now export the data grid's information to clipboard for pasting into Excel or similar. You can export to a CSV file or even export the current tab to an image. So this should give our advanced users some great data to play with and we'll be interested to see what uses you come up with for this exported information. The second change to the data grid is the introduction of a new ceiling penetration property called insulated in the zone data grid tab. So this user request feature allows you to quickly change and assess the improvement of insulating a ceiling penetration such as a downlight, etc. An insulated ceiling penetration won't be modeled as an uninsulated ceiling portion within the Chenas simulation. So the specified ceiling insulation of that ceiling will just be used throughout. So where you would previously have to change the width, height and clearance values to zero within the data grid to do this, you can now just leave the geometry accurate. Just select the insulated checkbox, noting that the clearance values will be set automatically to zero when you check this insulated property. And you can leave width and length as it is. And so you can evaluate the benefits of such a treatment for your projects, similar to the benefits of, say, air sealing or sealing penetration. Several of the data grid tabs have new functionalities within their footer bars. This includes the action button in the wall and opening data grid tabs that hold some new methods to split walls and openings, which we'll talk about later. You'll also notice the ability to show or hide special zone objects, i.e. those from roof spaces or subfloor zones, within some of the data grid tabs, such as hiding the walls of a subfloor zone, and in future we'll be uh, showing and hiding the walls of the other special zone type roof space zones there too. So this is just to reduce potential confusion, allow you to just see the normal zone walls within the data grid so you don't accidentally say change the height of a subfloor's external wall. And this setting is by default off, so these special zone objects are now hidden by default. And that's because for most use cases, you can likely leave them at their hero default settings and properties. Moving along to the construction library now. The first change is again just the ability to export the current assembly of the wall library to the various image clipboard and CSV standard types for Hero exports. We've also added several new optionally visible columns to the wall assembly table, including density, thermal conductivity, which together with the thickness of the material gives its R value, and the heat capacitance of the material, which determines its thermal mass properties. So we've added these columns not just for information's sake, but primarily for their ability to enable users to choose suitable replacement materials for materials that aren't contained in the Chenath materials database. So you should now find it easier to relate thermal conductivity and heat capacitance, etc., to an existing material for modeling those alternative materials. You'll also notice a new wall assembly group, concrete block, with a range of new assemblies, such as single block walls and various line block walls. As always, you can use our Trello feature roadmap to request new default wall, floor or ceiling assemblies, so please let us know if you feel some common assembly types are missing. Within the window library, version 1.2 now includes the latest WERS window database, 2.3.3.13.9.1, which adds thousands of new window specifications for your use. In particular, there are quite a few new low U-value options in the latest update. You'll also notice, similar to the template view, you can now save and load selected window lists. So you can select a range of window specifications and then hit save, and you'll be able to save that list to a file. Again, that file is shareable to your colleagues or community, and this will allow you to quickly toggle between those various lists for your projects. For example, Hero comes loaded with several default window lists relating to the various NATO's window types, such as aluminium, timber, composite, fiberglass, but you may want to create a specific list that may be of the most popular window types that you like to iterate through for improving a rating, or for designs or clients you may set up manufacturer specific lists and their most relevant specifications for your projects there too. So this save load uh, functionality um, operates very similar to the template views toolbar. You can rename the window list file 
You can copy the current selection to a new save file. You can save or overwrite the current selection to an existing file. Open or import a window list from outside the default hero user directory and the delete button to delete a custom window list file. Relating to simulations and results, there have been several minor changes in 1.2. The first is that you'll now see a progress indicator during simulation in the bottom right of the status bar next to the results summary. So while Chenath only reports progress a few times throughout simulation, this will still show you that simulation is proceeding and for multi-dwelling runs can show you a perspective of how many of the dwellings have finished. The next item is that you'll now get a visual indication when your results are judged as not compliant against HERO's rating and heating and cooling load limits. So the results will turn a shade of red when the simulation results are less than the required star rating or more than the maximum heating or cooling load limit. Within the results view itself, another user requested feature has been added. There's a new column in the zone by zone results table called star rating. And this indicates the equivalent star rating for that zone based on its floor area and energy. So you can quickly get an indication of your best and worst performing zones. Obviously unconditioned zones don't have any energy, uh, so no star rating is shown there. We have introduced a range of new, easy and quick ways to split walls and openings, given this is a common action required for most projects. For a wall, in the visual view, you can right click to access the previously available actions, split wall vertically or horizontally. But you'll notice now that when you select horizontally, you'll now be requested the height of that final split wall. You'll also notice a new option to copy the wall overhead, which would be used, for example, for clerestory projects. And here the new wall will be created at the top height of the previous wall. And again, you'll be asked for the final height of that overhead wall. However, you can use these new actions in the wall data grid to perform splits similar to the visual view, but with the capability to split multiple selected walls. At the moment, when you right click an object in the visual view, it will only apply to that object and not to multiple selected objects, but we'll be changing that in future. But for now, the data grid allows you to do bulk split actions on multiple objects. So let's say you had a project where all of the walls had a 500 mil bottom section of a different wall construction uh, with a different cladding above that 500 mil height. You could, within the data grid, select all the external walls, split horizontally, and specify the final height of the wall, and the new walls will be created with the remaining height. So you can see in this example here, we split all of these 2400 mil height walls, and let's say we wanted to split at 500 mil. The existing wall will be the topmost wall, and so its final height will be 1900 with a top height of 2400. And the new walls here are all named below. They'll have a 500 mil height and a zero mil base height. Similarly, we have added this capability to openings, again, both within the visual view and the data grid with a few differences. Some assessors like to model windows per pane so that each pane can have a specific WERS window specification applied to it for that opening style. Within the visual view, again, accessing the context menu via a right click on an opening, you'll now see the split opening submenu and its associated actions where you can split both vertically and horizontally in half or into three or at a specific height or width. So for example, for some complex window configurations, you might have a window split into quarters with two windows on top, two windows below, or window panes below. And so with just three actions, we can split that window by splitting it in half horizontally, then splitting that top window vertically in half, and then sending that to the back, selecting the lower window, and then splitting that in half again. Likewise, you can perform similar actions in the data grid using the split menu at the bottom of the data grid. And again, the main difference here is that it allows you to split multiple openings at the same time. So here again, we'll split two windows into quarters via a split vertically in half, and then split horizontally in half on each of those subsequently split. So we can do that in two actions. 
As per usual, we continue to introduce more automatic alert detection to improve QA within your projects, and so there's a range of new alerts, warnings, and information messages added to the Hero Alerts view, including a critical certification alert, which is raised if there's any duplicated unit numbers or dwelling names for multi-dwelling projects, a warning type alert that's raised if there's no hole or void zones uh, in a two-level dwelling, a warning type alert that's raised if there's no bedrooms in a dwelling and another if there's no unconditioned zones in a dwelling, a warning type alert that is raised if there's no screens in a project, an informational type alert that is raised if there's no openings in a zone, just so you don't say forget entering an internal door. Lastly, there have been a range of changes to the Hero web portal. The two main changes are the introduction of a Class 1 summary certificate and stamp for multi-dwelling Class 1 projects. So previously a multi-dwelling Class 1 project in the Hero web portal wasn't issued a summary certificate or stamp given that this didn't exist as a template NatHer certificate. Uh, with this update you will now be automatically issued this new Class 1 summary certificate and stamp upon a project upload and certification. This certificate and stamp varies slightly to the Class 2 summary certificate and stamp, given that Class 1 projects are usually related to all of the um, dwellings achieving a minimum star rating, uh, that all projects will have applied to them rather than, say, an average star rating for, say, Class 2 projects. So this feature will be important to both BASIX users who require a certificate number for even their Class 1 multi-dwelling projects to be entered in the BASIX portal and for other users just to assist in easier stamping for their Class 1 multi-dwelling projects like townhouses and the like. The second change to the Hero web portal is the introduction of what Hero calls our hybrid multi-dwelling modelling capabilities. And so this has been enabled by the introduction of a merge uh, project button in the web portal where you can now bring together multiple uploaded Hero files and bring them into a single group project uh, so that there will be issued a single summary certificate and stamp. Uh, importantly though, this is a hybrid approach in that you can, while well, you can model multiple hero files for a project, those hero files themselves can, they can have one dwelling or even multiple dwellings within them. So you may have, say, a 10 level project with 20 dwellings on each floor plate that you might want to model as 10 separate hero files each file might contain 20 dwellings. And so this capability gives the flexibility, particularly until the introduction of copy, paste and mirroring of dwellings and levels within Hero, which is coming, uh, to allow you to quickly duplicate dwellings or levels by using duplicate Hero files. So once you have decided upon your preferred modeling approach, uh, where you might simply be copying Hero save files into a new file, renaming that file for, say, a duplicate townhouse or a duplicated level of a multi-dwelling project, where you then might just have to change the level height above ground, the site exposure, the shading heights, etc. And you still retain um, a lot of the benefits of Hero's multi-dwelling modeling capabilities, such as its bulk editing and parallel simulations within the desktop tool. And then you can bring these files all together at the certification stage into one project on the web portal. That's all I'll discuss today. If you'd like to read the full change list of version 1.2, you'll see a full list of that in the version 1.2 installer or at our website. Once again, we'd like to thank you for your continued support in Hero. We look forward to discussing and hearing your feedback on this version, and we're excited about continuing to develop and innovate as we move into version 1.3. Thanks.